What is a number? The term number can be defined in many ways, including a sizable collection of people or things. And even an indefinite quantity or collection. In mathematics a number, or numeral, is usually defined as a symbolic representation of a specific quantity or place in a sequence. To most people, the most familiar numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. What is a number? The term number can be defined in many ways, including a sizable collection of people or things. And even an indefinite quantity or collection. In mathematics a number, or numeral, is usually defined as a symbolic representation of a specific quantity or place in a sequence. To most people, the most familiar numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. What is a decimal system? The decimal system uses the base 10 notation system to represent real numbers. A decimal expansion is the expression of a number within the decimal system. Such as 1, 15, 359, 18.7, and 3.14159. Each number within the system is called a decimal digit. Such decimal notation or a numbering notation based on decimals was first used in India around the year 594. The decimal point is represented by a period placed to the right of a unit's place in a decimal number. It is interesting to note that a comma is used in continental Europe to denote a decimal point. Such as 3,25, translated as 3.25, which in this case would logically be called the decimal comma. What is a decimal system? The decimal system uses the base 10 notation system to represent real numbers. A decimal expansion is the expression of a number within the decimal system. Such as 1, 15, 359, 18.7, and 3.14159. Each number within the system is called a decimal digit. Such decimal notation or a numbering notation based on decimals was first used in India around the year 594. The decimal point is represented by a period placed to the right of a unit's place in a decimal number. It is interesting to note that a comma is used in continental Europe to denote a decimal point. Such as 3,25 translated as 3.25, which in this case would logically be called the decimal comma. What is currently the most common numeration system? The most common numeration system in use today is the Hindu Arabic. This set of numerals has 10 digits in a place value decimal system. 
which is a fancy way of saying that a decimal system one based on tens is an integral part of the system. And that each number has a certain value depending on its place in the list of numbers. What is currently the most common numeration system? The most common numeration system in use today is the Hindu Arabic. This set of numerals has 10 digits in a place value decimal system. Which is a fancy way of saying that a decimal system one based on tens is an integral part of the system. And that each number has a certain value depending on its place in the list of numbers. How did the Hindu Arabic numerals spread to Europe? Hindu Arabic numerals, often less accurately called Arabic numerals or numbers, had their roots in India before 300 BCE. From there, the use of Indian numerals followed the western trade routes to Spain and northern Africa that were taken by the Arabic-Islamic peoples, this consequently resulted in the expanded use of these symbols. It took several more centuries to spread the idea to Europe. Although the Spanish used some Hindu-Arabic symbols as early as the late 900s, Records of a more extensive use of these symbols occurred around 1202. Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa, also known as Fibonacci, c 1170 c 1250, for more about Fibonacci, cp. 77 and history of mathematics introduced the Hindu-Arabic numbers in his book Liberabasi, the book of the Abacus. The acceptance of such a numbering system was difficult. For example, in some places in Italy it was forbidden to use anything but Roman numerals. By the late 15th century, most people in Europe were still using an Abacus and Roman numerals. The 16th century was the turning point, with European traders, surveyors, bookkeepers, and merchants spreading the use of the Hindu-Arabic numerals. After all, it took longer to record data using Roman numerals than with Hindu-Arabic numbers. The advent of the printing press also helped by standardizing the way the Hindu-Arabic numbers looked. By the 18th century, the new numeration system was entrenched, establishing a system that dominates the way we work with and perceive numbers in the 21st century. For more information about Hindu Arabic and Roman numerals, see History of Mathematics. How did the Hindu-Arabic numerals spread to Europe? Hindu-Arabic numerals, often less accurately called Arabic numerals or numbers, had their roots in India before 300 BCE. From there, the use of Indian numerals followed the western trade routes to Spain and northern Africa that were taken by the Arabic-Islamic peoples, this consequently resulted in the expanded use of these symbols. It took several more centuries to spread the idea to Europe. 
although the Spanish used some Hindu-Arabic symbols as early as the late 900s. Records of a more extensive use of these symbols occurred around 1202. Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa Also known as Fibonacci, C 1170 C 1250, for more about Fibonacci, CP. 77 and History of Mathematics Introduced the Hindu-Arabic numbers in his book Libra Basi, the Book of the Abacus. The acceptance of such a numbering system was difficult. For example, in some places in Italy it was forbidden to use anything but Roman numerals. By the late 15th century, most people in Europe were still using an abacus and Roman numerals. The 16th century was the turning point, with European traders, surveyors, bookkeepers, and merchants spreading the use of the Hindu-Arabic numerals. After all, it took longer to record data using Roman numerals than with Hindu-Arabic numbers. The advent of the printing press also helped by standardizing the way the Hindu-Arabic numbers looked. By the 18th century, the new numeration system was entrenched. Establishing a system that dominates the way we work with and perceive numbers in the 21st century. For more information about Hindu-Arabic and Roman numerals, see History of Mathematics. How did the Hindu-Arabic numbers evolve? The evolution of the Hindu-Arabic numbers was not a straight line from India to Arabia and on to Europe. In between, the Arabic cultures had more than one number SYS Tem to contend with. Including at least three different types of arithmetic, finger reckoning arithmetic, counting on fingers. A sexagesimal system with numbers written in letters of the Arabic alphabet, and Indian numeral arithmetic. The evolution of the Hindu-Arabic numbers continued throughout time. And includes some good reasons for why our numbers look as they do today. For example, historians believe that between 970 and 1082, the numbers 2 and 3 changed significantly. Rotating 90 degrees from their original written position. This is thought to be due to how scribes worked, sitting cross-legged. They wrote on a scroll they wound from right to left across their body. This caused them to write from top to bottom, not our usual left to right. The script was then rotated when the scroll was read. How did the Hindu-Arabic numbers evolve? The evolution of the Hindu-Arabic numbers was not a straight line from India to Arabia and on to Europe. In between, the Arabic cultures had more than one number SYS Tem to contend with. Including at least three different types of arithmetic, finger reckoning arithmetic, counting on fingers. A sexagesimal system with numbers written in letters of the Arabic alphabet, and Indian numeral arithmetic. The evolution of the Hindu-Arabic numbers continued throughout time. And includes some good reasons for why our numbers look as they do today. For example, 
historians believe that between 970 and 1082, the numbers 2 and 3 changed significantly. Rotating 90 degrees from their original written position. This is thought to be due to how scribes worked, sitting cross-legged. They wrote on a scroll they wound from right to left across their body. This caused them to write from top to bottom, not our usual left to right. The script was then rotated when the scroll was read. How are numbers classified? The set of natural numbers are also called integers or counting or whole numbers which are usually defined as the positive and negative whole numbers, along with zero, zero. How are numbers classified? The set of natural numbers are also called integers or counting or whole numbers which are usually defined as the positive and negative whole numbers, along with zero, zero. What are non-vanishing and vanishing numbers? A non-vanishing number means just what the term implies, a quantity that is non-zero everywhere. For example, in the expression x4 plus 1, the answer will never be zero. Even when x is zero or a negative number. The answer for the expression x2 is called vanishing because if x equals zero, the expression's answer vanishes to zero. What are non-vanishing and vanishing numbers? A non-vanishing number means just what the term implies, a quantity that is non-zero everywhere. For example, in the expression x4 plus 1, the answer will never be 0. Even when x is 0 or a negative number. The answer for the expression x2 is called vanishing because if x equals 0, the expression's answer vanishes to 0. What do computers and arithmetic have in common? Computers and arithmetic have a great deal in common. Arithmetical operations are actually digital computer operations in which the numerical quantities are computed. Either through adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, or otherwise comparing them. Arithmetical instructions give a computer program direction to perform an arithmetic operation on specific types of data. Such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The sections of the computer that carry out these computations and other Logic operations are called arithmetical units, or arithmetic sections. For more information about computers and math, see Math in Computing.
What is the definition of a clock? A clock, from the Latin clica, or bell, is an instrument we use for measuring time. There are actually two main qualities that define a clock, first, it must have a regular, constant, or repetitive action, or process, that will effectively mark off equal increments of time. For example, in the old days before our battery-driven, analog and digital clocks and watches. Clocks included marking candles in even increments. Or using a specific amount of sand in an hourglass to measure time. Second, there has to be a way to keep track of the time increments and easily display the results. This eventually led to the development of watches, large clocks such as Big Ben in London, England, and even the clocks that count down the new year. The most accurate clocks today are atomic clocks, which use an atomic frequency standard as the counter. How are mathematics and the study of time connected? Mathematics is definitely tied to time. There has long been a need in human civilizations to record many sequences of events. Especially those in nature that affected people. For example, the changing of the seasons was important to know. As it influenced the planting and growing of crops, when rivers would flood. And even when weather would change from monsoon rains and harsh droughts to potential blizzards. The first such timekeepers counted the changing days and years by the movement of stars, the sun and the moon across the sky, all of which are activities that included simple mathematical calculations. Why was the Bernoulli family important to mathematics? The Bernoulli also seen as Bernoulli. Family of the 17th and 18th centuries is synonymous with mathematics and science. One of the developers of ordinary calculus, calculus of variations. And the first to use the word integral was Jacob Bernoulli, 1654-1705, also known as Jacob, Jacques, or James. He also wrote about the theory of probability, is often credited for developing the field of statistics. And discovered a series of numbers that bear his name. The coefficients of the exponential series expansion of x slash, 1 ex. Not to be outdone, his brother Johann, 1667 to 1748, also known as Jean or John. Contributed to the field of integral and exponential calculus. Was the founder of calculus of variations, and worked on geodesics, complex numbers, and trigonometry. His son was not far behind, Daniel Bernoulli, 1700-1782, was considered the first mathematical physicist. Publishing Hydrodynamica in 1738, which included his now famous principle named in his honor. Bernoulli's principle, and he brought out two ideas that were ahead of his time by many years. 
the law of conservation of energy and the kinetic molecular theory of gases. The Bernoulli legacy did not end there. With family members continuing to make great mathematical and scientific contributions. There were two Nicolas Bernoullis, one, the brother of Jacob and Johann. 1662-1716, was professor of mathematics at St. Petersburg, Russia's Academy of Sciences, the other. The son of Johann and brother of Daniel, 1695-1726, was also a mathematician. Another Johann Bernoulli, 1710-1790, was another son of Johann, and brother of Daniel, who succeeded his father in the chair of mathematics at Basel, Switzerland, and also contributed to physics. The younger Johann also had a son named Johann, 1746-1807, who was astronomer royal in Berlin and also studied mathematics and geography. Finally, Jacob Bernoulli, 1759-1789, yet another son of the younger Johann, succeeded his uncle Daniel in teaching mathematics and physics at St. Petersburg, but he met an untimely death by drowning. What is currently the most common numeration system? The most common numeration system in use today is the Hindu Arabic. This set of numerals has 10 digits in a place value decimal system. Which is a fancy way of saying that a decimal system one based on tens is an integral part of the system. And that each number has a certain value depending on its place in the list of numbers. What is some of the earliest evidence of keeping time? No one agrees which culture, s, first invented timekeeping. Some historians and archaeologists believe that marks on sticks and bones made by ice. Age hunters in with each hour composed of 60 minutes, and each minute having 60 seconds. It is unknown why the Babylonians chose to divide by 60, also called a base number. Theories range from connections to the number of days in a year. Weights and measurements, and even that the base 60 system was somehow easier for them to use. Whatever the explanation, their methods proved to be important to us centuries later. We still use 60 as the basis of our timekeeping system, hours, minutes, seconds and in our definitions of circular measurements, degrees, minutes, seconds. For more information about the Sumerian counting system, see History of Mathematics. Who developed the first ideas on symbolic logic? English mathematician George Boole, 1815-1864, was the first to develop ideas on symbolic logic. That is, the use of symbols to represent logical principles. He proposed this in his treatise, An Investigation of the Laws of Thought. 
on which are founded the mathematical theories of logic and probabilities, 1854. Today, this is called Boolean algebra. For more information about Boole, see algebra. For more information about symbolic logic, see Foundations of Mathematics. What is a decimal system? The decimal system uses the base 10 notation system to represent real numbers. A decimal expansion is the expression of a number within the decimal system. Such as 1, 15, 359, 18.7, and 3.14159. Each number within the system is called a decimal digit. Such decimal notation or a numbering notation based on decimals was first used in India around the year 594. The decimal point is represented by a period placed to the right of a unit's place in a decimal number. It is interesting to note that a comma is used in continental Europe to denote a decimal point. Such as 3, 25 translated as 3.25, which in this case would logically be called the decimal comma. How did our present day become divided into hours, minutes, and seconds? Divisions into hours, minutes, and seconds probably began with the Sumerians around 3000 BCE. They divided the day into 12 periods, and the periods into 30 sections. About 1000 years later, the Babylonian civilization, which was then in the same area as the Sumerians, broke the day into 24 hours, Europe around 20,000 years ago recorded days between successive new moons. Another hypothesis states that the measurement of time dates back some 10,000 years, which coincides with the development of agriculture, especially in terms of when to best plant crops. Still others point to timekeeping evidence dating back 5,000 to 6. 000 years ago around the Middle East and North Africa. Whatever the true beginnings, most researchers agree that timekeeping is one of those subjects whose history will probably never be accurately known. How did the Hindu Arabic numbers evolve? The evolution of the Hindu-Arabic numbers was not a straight line from India to Arabia and on to Europe. In between, the Arabic cultures had more than one number SYS Tem to contend with. Including at least three different types of arithmetic, finger reckoning arithmetic, counting on fingers. A sexagesimal system with numbers written in letters of the Arabic alphabet, and Indian numeral arithmetic. The evolution of the Hindu Arabic numbers continued throughout time and includes some good reasons for why our numbers look as they do today. For example, historians believe that between 970 and 1082, the numbers 2 and 3 changed significantly. Rotating 90 degrees from their original written position. 
This is thought to be due to how scribes worked, sitting cross-legged. They wrote on a scroll they wound from right to left across their body. This caused them to write from top to bottom, not our usual left to right. The script was then rotated when the scroll was read. When was the first arithmetic book published in North America? In 1556 the first arithmetic book was published in North America by Brother Juan Diaz Frail, a Franciscan friar. The name of the book was Sumario Compendioso de las Cuentas de Plata y Oro que en los Reinos del Piru. Son necesarias a los mercaders y todo genero de tratantes, con algunas reglas de cantes al arithmetica. The title translates as Comprehensive Summary of the Counting of Silver and Gold. Which, in the kingdoms of Peru, are necessary for merchants and all kinds of traders. The book explained the conversion of gold or into value equivalents in different types of coinage in the old world. Problems that required the use of ratios and proportions. Diaz also included a short chapter on algebra. The first English-language mathematics book written in North America was published in 1729 by Isaac Greenwood and titled Arithmetic, Vulgar and Decimal, Vulgar refers to the common people. Greenwood's life was also somewhat vulgar, he was appointed to the first Hollis. Professorship of Mathematics and Natural Philosophy at Harvard University in Massachusetts when it was founded in 1727. By 1737 he was removed for intemperance. Reportedly, he drank too much, and more than likely his views, philosophical and otherwise, differed greatly from those of his colleagues at the university. What are non-vanishing and vanishing numbers? A non-vanishing number means just what the term implies, a quantity that is non-zero everywhere. For example, in the expression x4 plus 1, the answer will never be zero. Even when x is zero or a negative number. The answer for the expression x2 is called vanishing because if x equals zero. The expression's answer vanishes to zero. How did the Hindu Arabic numerals spread to Europe? Hindu Arabic numerals, often less accurately called Arabic numerals or numbers, had their roots in India before 300 BCE. From there, the use of Indian numerals followed the western trade routes to Spain and northern Africa that were taken by the Arabic-Islamic peoples, this consequently resulted in the expanded use of these symbols. It took several more centuries to spread the idea to Europe. Although the Spanish used some Hindu-Arabic symbols as early as the late 900s. Records of a more extensive use of these symbols occurred around 1202. Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa. 
also known as Fibonacci, C1170 C1250, for more about Fibonacci, CP. 77 and History of Mathematics Introduced the Hindu Arabic numbers in his book Liber Abbasi, the Book of the Abacus. The acceptance of such a numbering system was difficult. For example, in some places in Italy it was forbidden to use anything but Roman numerals. By the late 15th century, most people in Europe were still using an abacus and Roman numerals. The 16th century was the turning point, with European traders, surveyors, bookkeepers, and merchants spreading the use of the Hindu Arabic numerals. After all, it took longer to record data using Roman numerals than with Hindu Arabic numbers. The advent of the printing press also helped by standardizing the way the Hindu Arabic numbers looked. By the 18th century, the new numeration system was entrenched. Establishing a system that dominates the way we work with and perceive numbers in the 21st century. For more information about Hindu Arabic and Roman numerals, see History of Mathematics. What culture took the first steps toward timekeeping? Around 5,000 years ago, the Sumerians in the Tigris Euphrates Valley, today's Iraq, appear to have had a calendar, but it is unknown if they truly had a timekeeping device. The Sumerians divided the year into months of 30 days. The day was then divided into 12 periods, each corresponding to two of our modern hours. And the periods into 30 parts, each corresponding to four of our minutes. Overall, many researchers agree that the Egyptians were the first serious timekeepers. Around 3500 BCE, they erected obelisks, tall, four-sided monuments. Placing them in specific places in order to cast shadows as the sun moved overhead. This thus created a large, crude form of a sundial. This sundial time was broken into two parts, before noon and afternoon. Eventually, more divisions would be added, breaking down the time units even more into hours. Based on the length of the obelisk's shadows. The huge sundials could also be used to determine the longest and shortest days of the year. What was the driving force behind the development of accurate clocks? The true driving force behind accurate clocks began around the 16th century in relation to finding longitudinal measurement. As countries began to explore the world, an accurate way of telling a ship's position became a critical problem. With one time standard around the world, and clocks to tell those times. Longitude, and thus position, could be determined. This would not only mean an increase in exploration but also wealth for the sponsoring country. What is the connection between calendars and math? A 
A calendar is essentially a numbering system that represents a systematic way of organizing days into weeks. Months, years, and millennia, especially in terms of a human lifespan. It was the necessity to count, keep track of, and organize days, months, and so on that gave rise to calendars. All of which also entails the knowledge of mathematics to make such calculations. What is arithmetic progression? Arithmetic progression is one of the more simple types of series in mathematics. It is usually in the form of A, A and D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D, and so on. In which A is the first term and D is the constant difference between the two successive terms. A progression is also seen as these numbers are added. As in A plus, a and D, plus, A plus 2D, plus, A plus 3D, plus, A plus, and plus 1, D. An example of an arithmetic progression would be 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 14 plus, in which D is equal to 4. How is temperature measured? Temperature is measured using a thermometer, thermo meaning heat and meter meaning to measure. The inventor of the thermometer was probably Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642. Who used a device called the thermoscope to measure hot and cold? Temperatures are determined using various scales, the most popular being Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. Invented by Swedish astronomer, mathematician, and physicist Anders Celsius. 1701 to 1744, in 1742, Celsius used to be called the centigrade scale. It can be capitalized or not, centigrade means divided into 100 degrees. He used 0 degrees Celsius to mark the freezing point of water. The point where water boils was marked as 100 degrees Celsius. Because of its ease of use, mainly because it is based on an even 100 degrees. It is the scale most used by scientists, it is also the scale most associated with the metric system. Fahrenheit is the scale invented by Polish-born German physicist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. 1686-1736 his thermometer contained mercury in a long, thin tube, which responded to changes in temperatures. He arbitrarily decided that the difference between water freezing and boiling 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 212 degrees Fahrenheit, respectively would be 180 degrees. The Kelvin scale was invented in 1848 by Lord Kelvin, 1824 to 1907, who was also known as Sir William Thomson, Baron Kelvin of Largs. His scale starts at 0 degrees Kelvin, a point that is also known as absolute zero. The temperature at which all molecular activity ceases and the coldest temperature possible. His idea was that there was no limit to how hot things can get, but there was a limit to how cold. Kelvin's absolute zero is equal to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, 
or minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. So far, scientists believe nothing in the universe can get that cold. When was quantum mechanics developed? There was not one major year in which quantum mechanics was developed. Or even one major scientist who proposed the idea. This modern theory of physics evolved over about 30 years, with many scientists contributing to it. Beginning about 1900 Max Planck proposed that energies of any harmonic oscillator such as the atoms of a black body radiator, are restricted to certain values. Mathematics came into play here, too, with each value an integral multiple of a basic, minimum value. Planck developed the equation E equals HV, or H times nu, in which E the energy of the basic quantum, is directly proportional to the V, the frequency of the oscillator multiplied by h or planck's constant 6.63 x 10 to 34 joule second from there mainly with the use of rigorous mathematics others expanded or added to planck's idea including german scientist albert einstein 1879 to 1955 who explained the photoelectric effect. New Zealand-born British physicist Ernest Rutherford, 1871-1937, and Danish physicist Niels Bohr, 1885-1962, who explained both atomic structure and spectra, Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger, 1887-1961, who developed wave mechanics and German physicist Werner Karl Heisenberg, 1901-1976, who discovered the uncertainty principle. Out of these studies came quantum mechanics, in the 1920s, quantum statistics and quantum field theory. Today, quantum mechanics and Einstein's theory of relativity form the foundation of modern physics. These theories continually change or are modified as we get closer to understanding more about the physics and mathematics of our universe. How are numbers classified? The set of natural numbers are also called integers or counting or whole numbers which are usually defined as the positive and negative whole numbers, along with 0, 0. What was the Principia Mathematica? In 1910 the first volume of the Principia Mathematica was published by Welsh. Mathematician and logician Bertrand Arthur William Russell. 1872 to 1970, and English mathematician and philosopher Alfred North Whitehead, 1861 to 1947. This book was an attempt to put mathematics on a logical foundation. Developing logic theory as a basis for mathematics. It gave detailed derivations of many major theorems in set theory. Examined finite and transfinite arithmetic, and presented elementary measure theory. 
The two mathematicians published three volumes, but the fourth, on geometry, was never completed. On their own, both men did a great deal to advance mathematics, too. Russell discovered the Russell paradox, see below. Introduced the theory of types, and popularized first-order predicate calculus. Russell's logic consisted of two main ideas, that all mathematical truths can be translated into logical truths. Or that the vocabulary of mathematics constitutes a proper subset of the vocabulary of logic. And that all mathematical proofs can be recast as logical proofs. Or that the theorems of mathematics constitute a proper subset logical theorems. Whitehead excelled not only in mathematics and logic but also in the philosophy of science and study of metaphysics. In mathematics, he extended the known range of algebraic procedures, and he was a prolific writer. In philosophy, he criticized the traditional theories for their lack of integrating the direct relationship between matter, space, and time, thus. He created a vocabulary of his own design, which he called the philosophy of organism. Who was considered the first statistician? English statistician and tradesman John Grunt, 1620-1674, was the first true statistician and wrote the first book on statistics. Although statistics in a simpler form was known long before that. Grunt, a draper by profession, was the first to use a compilation of data, which in this case involved the records of bills of mortality, or the records of how and when people died in London from 1604 to 1661 in his natural and political observations made upon the bills of mortality. He determined certain inclinations, such as more boys were born than girls, women tend to live longer than men, etc. He also developed the first mortality table, which showed how long a person might expect to live after a certain age. A concept very familiar to us today, especially in fields such as insurance and health. How was, and is, one second defined? A second was once defined as 1 slash 86 comma 400 of a mean solar day. By 1956 this definition was changed by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures to 1 slash 31 comma 556 comma 925.9747 of the length of the tropical year 1900. But like most measurements. The second definition changed again in 1964, when it was assigned to be the equivalent of 9,192,631. 770 cycles of radiation associated with a particular change in state of a cesium-133 atom. Interestingly enough, by 1983 the second became the definer of the meter. Scientists defined a meter as 1 slash 299 comma 792 comma 458 the distance light travels in one second. This was done because the distance light travels in one second. 
was more accurate than the former definition of the standard meter. Are there more advanced concepts in arithmetic? Yes, arithmetic can even be more advanced than the ideas mentioned above. For example, higher arithmetic is the archaic term for number theory, which is the study of the properties of integers. Or whole numbers, 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. It can include anything from simpler arithmetic concepts to the more complex. Such as Diophantin equations, for more information about these equations. See algebra, prime numbers, see below, and functions such as the Riemann hypothesis. For more about Friedrich Bernhard Riemann, see History of Mathematics and Geometry and Trigonometry. There are other more advanced ideas in arithmetic, too. For example, modular arithmetic is known as the arithmetic of congruences, see below. The model theory discusses the existence of non-standard models of arithmetic. And floating-point arithmetic is performed on real numbers by computers or other automated devices. What did David Hilbert propose in 1900? In 1900 German mathematician David Hilbert, 1862-1943, proposed 23 unsolved mathematical problems for the new century. Most of which only proved to bring up other problems. By the 1920s Hilbert gathered many mathematicians called the formalists to prove that mathematics was consistent. But all did not go well as mathematical complications set in. By 1931 Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorem dashed any more efforts by the formalists by proving that mathematics is either inconsistent or incomplete. For more about Hilbert, see Foundations of Mathematics. What is arithmetic? Arithmetic is a branch of mathematics that deals with numerical computation, specifically. It includes computation using integers, rational numbers, real numbers, or complex numbers. The word arithmetic has its roots in the Greek word for to count. Arithmian, also arithmos, or number. Arithmetic contains all the rules for combining two or more numbers. In most cases, when mathematicians talk about elementary arithmetic, they are speaking of those subjects most of us learned in grade school, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division being the most common, and fractions, geometry, and measurements. Ratios and proportion, simple probabilities, and algebra examined in more advanced levels. For even more advanced students, such arithmetic lessons as congruence calculation, root extraction, power computations, and advanced factorizations are often presented.
Who first developed set theory? German mathematician George, George, Ferdinand Ludwig Philipp Cantor. 1845 to 1918, was not only known for his work on transfinite numbers, but also for his development of set theory. Which is the basis of modern mathematical analysis, for more information on set theory, see Foundations of Mathematics. His Mathematisk Analen was a basic introduction to set theory. Unlike most long evolutionary histories of mathematical subjects, Cantor's set theory was his creation alone. In the late 19th century, Cantor also developed the continuum hypothesis. He realized that there were many different sized infinities. Further conjecturing that two particular infinities constructed by different processes were the same size. When was non-Euclidean geometry first announced? Non-Euclidean geometry or a system of geometry different from that developed by Euclid, CP. 17, was first announced by Russian mathematician Nikolai Ivanovich Lobachevsky, 1792-1856, also seen as Lobachevsky. In 1826, this idea had already been independently developed by the Hungarian Janos or Johann, Bolyai, 1802-1860, in 1823 and by Karl Friedrich Gauss, 1777-1855, in 1816, but Lobachevsky was the first to publish on the subject. In 1854 German mathematician George Friedrich Bernhard Riemann 1826 to 1866, presented several new general geometric principles. His suggestion of another form of non-Euclidean geometry further established this new way of looking at geometry. Riemann was also responsible for presenting the Riemann hypothesis or zeta function a complex function that remains an unsolved issue in mathematics today. For more information about geometry and Riemann, see Geometry and Trigonometry. What was the golden age of logic? Ert Gödel's work led to what is often described as the golden age of logic. Spanning the years from about 1930 to the late 1970s. It was a time when there was a great deal of work done in mathematical logic. From the beginning, mathematicians broke into many camps that worked on various phases of logic. For more information about logic, see Foundations of Mathematics, including Proof theory in which the mathematical proofs started by Aristotle and continued by Boole, cp. 30, were extensively studied, resulting in branches of this mathematics being applied to computing, including artificial intelligence. Model theory in which mathematicians investigated the connection between the truth in a mathematical structure and propositions about that structure. 
set theory in which a breakthrough in 1963 showed that certain mathematical statements were undeterminable. A direct challenge to the major set theories of the time. This showed that Cantor's continuum hypothesis, CP 31, is independent of the axioms of set theory, or that there are two mathematical possibilities. One that says the continuum hypothesis is true, one that says it is false. Computability theory in which mathematicians worked out the abstract. Theorems that would eventually help lead to computer technology. For example, English mathematician Alan Turing proved an abstract theorem that established the theoretical possibility of a single computing machine program to complete any computation. For more information about Turing and computers, CP34 and Math in Computing. How does a sundial work? The sundial tracks the apparent movement of the sun across the sky. It does this by casting a shadow on the surface of a usually circular dial marked by hour and minute lines. The gnomon or the shadow casting angular object on the dial becomes the axis about which the sun appears to rotate. To work correctly, it must point to the north celestial pole, near the star Polaris. Also called the north star, thus, the gnomon's angle is determined by the latitude of the user. For example, New York City is located at about 40.5 degrees north latitude. So a gnomon on a sundial in that city would be at a 40.5 degree angle on a sundial. The sharper the shadow line, the greater the accuracy, in addition. Larger sundials are more accurate, because the hour line can be divided into smaller units of time. But the sundial can't be too large. Eventually, diffraction of the sunlight around the gnomon causes the shadow to soften. Making the time more difficult to read. Who was Carl Friedrich Gauss? German mathematician, physicist, and astronomer Carl Friedrich Gauss 1777 to 1855, also seen as Johann Carl or Carl Friedrich Gauss, was considered one of the greatest mathematicians of his time. Some have even compared him to Archimedes and Newton. His greatest mathematical contributions were in the fields of higher arithmetic and number theory. He discovered the law of quadratic reciprocity, determined the method of least squares. Independently of French mathematician Adrien Marie Legendre 1752 to 1833, popularized the symbol i as the square root of negative 1, although Euler first used the symbol did extensive investigations in the theory of space curves and surfaces, made contributions to differential geometry, and much more. In 1801, after the discovery, and subsequent loss, of the first asteroid, Ceres. By Giuseppe Piazzi, he calculated the object's orbit with little data, the asteroid was found again thanks to his calculations. 
he further calculated the orbits of asteroids found over the next few years. Who was one of the most prolific mathematicians who ever lived? Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, 1707-1783 Is considered to be one of the most prolific mathematicians who ever lived. In fact, his accomplishments are beyond the scope of this text. Suffice it to say that his collected works number more than 70 volumes, with contributions in pure and applied mathematics including the calculus of variations, analysis, number theory, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, analytical mechanics, hydrodynamics, and the lunar theory, calculation of the motion of the moon. Euler was one of the first to develop the methods of the calculus on a wide scale. His most famous book, Elements of Algebra, rapidly became a classic. And he wrote a geometry textbook, Yale University was the first American college to use the text. Although half-blind for much of his life and totally blind for his last 17 years she had a near legendary skill at calculation. Among his discoveries are the differential equation named for him, a formula relating the number of faces, edges, and vertices of a polyhedron, although Euler's formula was discovered earlier by René Descartes, and a famous equation connecting five fundamental numbers in mathematics. Like many in the Bernoulli family, Euler eventually worked at the Academy of Sciences in St. Petersburg, Russia, a center of learning founded by Peter the Great. What are the methods for converting temperatures between the various scales? He following lists ways to convert from one temperature scale to another using, of course, simple mathematics. Fahrenheit to Celsius, C degree equals, F degree 32, slash 1.8, also seen as, 5 ninths, F degree 32, Celsius to Fahrenheit, F degree equals. C degree X 1.8, plus 32 also seen as, 9 fifths, C degree, plus 32 Fahrenheit to Kelvin, K degree equals F degree 32 slash 1.8 plus 273.15 Kelvin to Fahrenheit. F degree equals, K degree 273.15, X 1.8 plus 32 Celsius to Kelvin, K degree equals C degree plus 273.15 Kelvin to Celsius, C degree equals K degree 273. What was one of the first devices used to measure time? One of the first devices smaller than the obelisks mentioned above to measure time was a crude sundial. By about 1500 BCE, the true, small sundial, or shadow clock, was developed in Egypt. It was divided into ten parts, with two twilight hours marked. But it could only tell time for half a day, afternoon. 
the sundial had to be turned 180 degrees to measure the afternoon hours. More refinements of measuring time occurred later. In order to correct for the sun's changing path over the sky throughout the year, the nomonor object that creates the shadow on the sundial had to be set at the correct angle, what we call latitude. Eventually, the sundial was perfected. Multiple designs were used. For example, shortly before 27 BCE the Roman architect Marcus Vitruvius Pollios, c. 90-20 BCE, De Architectura described 13 different designs of sundials. Who was Kurt Gödel? For about a hundred years, mathematicians such as Bertrand Russell were trying to present axioms that would define the entire field of mathematics on an axiomatic basis. Austrian-American mathematician and logician Kurt Gödel 1906-1978, was the first to suggest that any formal system strong enough to include the laws of mathematics is either incomplete or inconsistent. This was called Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Thus, axioms could not define all of mathematics. Gödel also stated that the various branches of mathematics are based in part on propositions that are not provable within the system itself. Although they may be proved by means of logical, metamathematical, systems external to mathematics. In other words, nothing is as simple as it seems, and, interestingly enough, Gödel's idea also implies that a computer can never be programmed to answer all mathematical questions. What is a number? The term number can be defined in many ways, including a sizable collection of people or things. And even an indefinite quantity or collection. In mathematics a number, or numeral, is usually defined as a symbolic representation of a specific quantity or place in a sequence. To most people, the most familiar numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. What are rational, irrational, and real numbers? Rational, or fractional, numbers are most often regarded as divisions, or ratios, of integers. By creating a fraction, dividing one integer by another. A rational number produces either a number that ends or repeats decimals. For example, one-fourth equals the decimal equivalent of 0 0.25. One-third is equivalent to 0 0.33333. Both of these are rational numbers. For more information about fractions, cp. 98, on the other hand, irrational numbers are all the numbers that can be written as non-repeating, non-finite, or non-terminating, decimals. Also called non-rational numbers, they include the decimal equivalent of pi, or 3.141592. 
Finally, if you put the rational and irrational numbers together, they form the real numbers. Most numbers we use in our everyday lives are real numbers. What are rational, irrational, and real numbers? Rational, or fractional, numbers are most often regarded as divisions, or ratios, of integers. By creating a fraction, dividing one integer by another. A rational number produces either a number that ends or repeats decimals. For example, one-fourth equals the decimal equivalent of 0.25. One third is equivalent to 0 0.33333. Both of these are rational numbers. For more information about fractions, cp. 98, on the other hand, irrational numbers are all the numbers that can be written as non repeating, non finite, or non terminating decimals. Also called non-rational numbers, they include the decimal equivalent of pi, or 3.141592. Finally, if you put the rational and irrational numbers together, they form the real numbers. Most numbers we use in our everyday lives are real numbers. What are imaginary numbers? The opposite of real numbers are, logically enough, called imaginary numbers. If you square a positive number, the result is positive. If you square a negative number, the result is also a positive number. Thus, in order to square a number to get a negative one, mathematicians invented the imaginary number, I. What are imaginary numbers? The opposite of real numbers are, logically enough, called imaginary numbers. If you square a positive number, the result is positive. If you square a negative number, the result is also a positive number. Thus, in order to square a number to get a negative one, mathematicians invented the imaginary number, I. Can there be more than one type of number? Yes, numbers can be classified as more than one type, and it's not always easy to keep them straight. The following lists some ways to better understand the plethora of number types. A rational number is not always an integer, 4 slash 1 is an integer, but 2 thirds is not. But an integer is always a rational number because it can be represented by a fraction by putting the integer over 1, or slash 1, such as 2 slash 1 or 234 slash 1 a number can either be rational or irrational but not both the number for pi, 3.141592. Is irrational, the decimal does not repeat, and real zero.
Can there be more than one type of number? Yes, numbers can be classified as more than one type, and it's not always easy to keep them straight. The following lists some ways to better understand the plethora of number types. A rational number is not always an integer, 4 slash 1 is an integer, but 2 thirds is not. But an integer is always a rational number because it can be represented by a fraction by putting the integer over 1, or slash 1, such as 2 slash 1 or 234 slash 1 a number can either be rational or irrational but not both the number for pi, 3.141592. Is irrational, the decimal does not repeat, and real zero. How do you perform imaginary number computations? Imaginary numbers come in handy to do many computations, especially something called simplification. How do you perform imaginary number computations? Imaginary numbers come in handy to do many computations, especially something called simplification. <laughs>